Hello, this is Jack Jackson back again with, with our second video in our series of videos talking about inferential statistics. In our last video, we uh, basically introduced the basic idea of overview of what inferential statistics is all about. And in this one, we're going to be talking about point estimators. So what is a point estimator? Well, a point estimator uses a statistics from a, a, from a sample to estimate the corresponding population parameter. So for example, we can use the sample mean x bar to estimate the population mean mu. Or we could use the uh, sample variance s square to estimate the population variance sigma square. Or we could use the proportion of successes in a sample to estimate the proportion of successes in a population. So the basic idea here is Suppose we want to know, for example, the weight, average weight of all, uh, say, UA Fort Smith students. We, it's impractical uh, to go out and actually measure every single student. So what we might do instead is take a random sample and find the sample mean of that sample and use that to approximate the sample, the population mean uh, weight. So we'd be using x bar from the sample to approximate or estimate mu from the population. Now, when you're doing, um, when you're using a particular thing to estimate uh, a particular statistic to estimate some kind of population parameter, there are a couple characteristics that you want it to have. You want it to be unbiased and have minimal variance. Uh, basically, unbiased means that it is the the distribution of of uh, statistics is uh, centered correctly and minimal variance means it has a hopefully a small variance to it. So when you're looking at an unbiased estimator what you're saying is the mean of the sampling distribution of sample estimators is the same as the target parameter. The estimating statistics then basically does not routinely over or underestimate the target parameter. A good example of this is the sample mean x bar which is an unbiased estimator for the population mean. As we've seen before looking at sampling distributions the mean of the sample means is the same as the mean of the individuals in the population. So the sample mean does not inherently underestimate or overestimate the population mean uh, so it's a good good estimator in that sense. Uh, but however if we use the sample variance without the n minus 1 adjustment, but rather with an n in the denominator, it turns out to be an unbiased, it turns out to be biased in estimating the population variance. So to make it unbiased, what we have to do is put that adjustment of putting the n minus 1 in the denominator, if you can remember back to that formula. And so what that does is uh, that makes the sample variance actually an unbiased estimator for the population variance. So in other words, if we did a whole bunch of samples and took the sample variances and averaged them, then that would have a tendency to have the same value as the population variance, as long as we use the n minus 1 in the sample variance formula and, of course, the n uh, in the uh, population variance formula. Now, so what we really would like is a minimal variance unbiased estimator and that says of all the possible unbiased estimators we want the one with the smallest variance in the sampling distribution. So the sample mean turns out to be uh, a minimal variance unbiased estimator for the population mean. So um, out of this I don't really care that we know a whole lot about this for my particular class. Uh, entry level class, except to know that we do want the, the, the estimator to be unbiased. We don't want it to underestimate or overestimate the population parameter, uh, at least at least uh, inherently. And we want we would like the one that has a, a small amount of variation if we're given a choice. So the other main thing to get out of this is that x bar turns out to be the best possible estimate for mu if we only know the information given in a sample. Okay, so let's let's actually do something with a with a uh, point estimator here, and suppose that we're wanting to know the mean and variance of weights of all UAFS students. It's impractical and costly to measure the weights of all the entire population of all students, 
So what we might do is randomly measure the weights of 30 students that we see on campus. So we'll do a, a, a random sample and, made the, and do them. And then suppose these are the weights here, 230 pounds, 150 pounds, and so forth. And by the way, I just made this data up. I didn't actually go out and, and do a sample here. So if this was my sample, and if it's a, say, random sample, what is the best estimate of the mean weight of all UAFS students, given that we have this data here? And what's the best estimate of the variance in weight of all UAF students, given this data? Okay, you should be able to answer this question on your own right now. So I'm going to ask you to uh, stop the video here in just a second, work this out, and come back and check your answer. Press pause now. Okay, well, if you're back, then what would you do here? Well, you would simply find the mean, the sample mean of this, this uh, data set, and that would be the best, effort, best estimate of the population mean of all students. And we would find the sample standard deviation of this uh, data set, and that would be, well, a sample variance, excuse me, and use that to find the, uh, to approximate the overall variance in all UAFS students. And uh, hopefully we've done plenty of that back in Unit 1, so I'll refer you back to that. But uh, you can certainly do this in your calculator. For example, if you've got a TI calculator, uh, like a TI-84, for example, you might type all this in in L1 by doing stat edit and then run one variable statistics and whatever it gives you for x bar is the best estimate of the mean and whatever it gives you for s is the the best estimate for the standard deviation so then take that s value and square it to get the variance and uh, here's what I came up with a sample mean of 159.7 pounds and a sample variance of a 1745.04488 pounds um, of course, all those digits are probably not significant given the data that we started with, but um, anyway, that's what the calculator gives. Now, there's an inherent problem with point estimators, and this is kind of the crux of what's going to come up to what's going on later on in the next video. A point estimator, for example, the sample mean, is a single number that's going to vary from sample to sample. So, if with like with this uh, these weight data. If I went to take another sample, even of the same size, uh, if it's another random sample, it's likely to come up with a different sample mean. Well, the population mean didn't change, but the sample means moving around. And I could do this time after time after time. And each time I'm going to get a potentially a different value for x bar. However, notice what's happening here is these, these x bar values in, have their own distribution. Of course, it should be the average of that, the mean of that should be the target uh, mu for the population. But it's almost certain that their point estimator is at least slightly different from this population parameter. Hopefully close, but probably not perfectly on. It's like trying to take a target, and the target is the population mu, and you're throwing this dart, and the idea is to try to hit that um, hit that value with the, exactly with the tip of the dart. Well, we can probably get pretty close, but hitting this a single little dot exactly with the tip is very unlikely. And then furthermore, we don't have any measure so far of how confident we are that the point estimator is close to the actual target parameter or any measure of how close it might be. And we will investigate these shortcomings by computing confidence intervals and so that's what our next video is going to be about it's going to be about developing the idea of a confidence interval interval